Hello learners, how are you doing today? Yesterday, I was reminded by a quote by, a famous quote by Abraham Lincoln. It goes as this, if I am given an hour to chop a tree, I would spend my half an hour sharpening my axe. Take the same case, we will prepare years and years for our UPSC. How many times have we thought to sit down and think, are we doing it right? Is our axe sharp enough to cut that mammoth tree? Today, let's take that opportunity. Seeing the condition of people thinking about CSAT, seeing the environment that people consider CSAT, I was just reminded of a story by Roger Bannister. Does anyone know who it is? Mm, if not, let me tell you. He was an uh, English physician who the first person to run a one minute mile, a mile, one mile in under four minutes until 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 1954 uh, there was uh, a pre prevalent theory that man is not suitable for running uh, even his physiology. There were dissertations written, there were papers presented in almost all conferences that it is impossible to run an, uh, a mile in less than four minutes. Everybody agreed and because many people tried, it was, it was the Mount Everest of uh, running. Many people tried but no one could. Then. He is actually an English physis physicist. He tried to do that. He too tried many times, but he failed. Then he sat down and analyzed what needs to be done. In order to run a mile in four minutes, he just broke it down into understandable pieces, achievable quantities. Okay, first minute, how much should I be able to run? Second minute how much I should be able to run and believe me, after he did it in 1954, in an year itself, at least 30 people uh, broke this barrier. Do you think those, uh, because he broke it, suddenly everybody became uh, super athletes or they got a boost of energy? No, it is because they have seen that something could be done. and. It could be done through calculated, in a calculated way. If you are able to maintain first minute running this much, it is done. So, in this way, let's break down CSAT this way because just like pre-1954, there is an uh, fear in the environment that CSAT is becoming difficult, CSAT is becoming tough, they are asking. Uh, IIT JE questions or somewhere uh, Olympiad questions. But is it? Is it really the case? To start from there, let's find the anatomy of an uh, CSAT question. What does UPSC want from you? What is UPSC checking in a candidate by conducting prelims? One, it is knowledge. And second one, being knowledgeful doesn't cut it. It needs some more. It is necessary but not sufficient. Second one is application. UPSC checks for both of these in every question uh, it does. Now, Everybody does CSAT like they do GS. You get the concepts here, you attend classes, you give mock tests, you give test series, learn from it, you see the solutions, learn from it and do it. The same way they are doing this for CSAT too. Have you any time thought 
okay is this the right way to do it because you may for you they may be two subjects gs and csat but are they same subjects because see just take an example for two suppose take these as diseases for two diseases you are uh, doing the same treatment does it work okay sometimes it may work but does it always work now seeing this let's analyze let's break down two pieces like how roger banister did what does a csat question what does upsc expect of a candidate to do in a csat question and in a gs paper and in a gs question next on the board is an uh, this is an gs question from csc 2023 and this is an csat question now let's get down to breaking it consider the following trees jackfruit mahua teak which of the following are deciduous now what does the upsc expect here that you already have information regarding deciduous trees and and you apply that here it is that simple if you don't know that what are deciduous trees or you don't know what these trees are this question can't be done so here upsc is mainly checking for your more than your application your application even depends on it being deciduous because if you don't know what is deciduous or if you don't know what these trees are you you can never apply the that information here so in gs upsc is checking primarily for your knowledge there is no knowledge present in this question you already have through your preparation acquired some knowledge and you are supposed to compare it decide it use your own uh, thinking process to decide whether which of these are deciduous so here the main thing that is being tested is your knowledge now come to csat this is an coded inequality question see consider the following he has given all info here so upsc checks for two things one knowledge number two application in your gs your knowledge is important without your knowledge even though you are a good you have a good uh, logic sense and all you can't do anything but see in the csat here there is no pre required knowledge that you need to know to solve this question because everything is given here this symbol means this this symbol means this this symbol means this this symbol means this and this symbol means this and you are supposed to find out here so in csat your knowledge is not as relevant as your application now you understand why there is a fear of csat because two different diseases you are applying the same uh, medicine that's why people are working hard really they took uh, csat as serious but is the way they are doing it is it correct but you should have seen csat is different from gs it needs a different process no i am not guaranteeing that if you do this way you will never fail no but you may you may pass uh, 10 or 15 times but if there are 100 times if you follow the same process can you guarantee me a success rate of more than 90 95% that could be no because csat 
is application based we can get from the name itself it is an aptitude test what is aptitude you might have studied in ethics aptitude versus attitude aptitude is your own thinking attitude can be changed through strong enough factors but aptitude is a slow process you need to learn the meanings you derive in your brain the images you form these all under comes under aptitude now let us solve the same question that we have seen here okay let's solve the same question here and see how many ways uh, it can be solved number 1 what does it say a plus plus sign indicates neither small nor equal that means a is neither small nor equal some people might have been confused by this if uh, they have not exposed been exposed to statements like this how do you define a thing a by calling it what it is it is a or by calling it any letter in the english alphabet except b c d e f g h i j k l m n until z so for anything you can describe it in two ways you can um, show this is nose or you can come around and say okay this is nose in the same way here he has given a statement telling in the negative sense not small not equal now let's define the operations here how many kinds of operations are there either equals either greater than or lesser than when he is telling not small not equal so cut this out not small not equal so it is greater than statement 1 a is it is telling that a is greater than b number 2 in the same way a minus it is it is not greater than so a is okay for each corresponding uh, concept let's write side itself equals to greater than or smaller than 1 a is a is not small not equal so neither small nor equal so it is greater than next it tells a is not greater than equals greater than smaller it is not greater so it is either smaller than or equal to b third one same way it is not small not small so a is either greater than or equal to b number 4 a divided by not great not equal not great not equal so smaller than a is smaller than b 5 not small not great so not small not great a is equals to b so all the information is given here you just need to apply so these are the five statements let erase this off so 
these are the five statements given now what is the statement given p into q statement p into q into stands for not smaller that is third one so p is greater than or equal to q next p minus t minus stands for not great so given p is smaller than or equal to t next t divided by r divided by stands for fourth t is smaller than r next r plus or minus s not small not great so r is equals to s so these are the four things given and now what what is the statement he is asking for either conclusion plus or minus stands for next s plus q plus stands for greater than so after applying all the knowledge here we get what he is asking is tell us whether q is equals to t or s is greater than q now one way to solve this is it is just reasoning it's logic applying known principles we know that p is greater than or equal to q arrange this in an orderly fashion p is greater than or equal to q and p is smaller than or equal to t so t should be greater than or equal to q and t is smaller than r so t is smaller than r and r equals to s now he is asking us the relationship between q and t q is here t is here he is asking us equals to but there is a chance of this being greater than right so in this case q is equals to 2 not always although it is possible but in many cases it could be because q could be p could be greater than q and t could be greater than p in only one case we get t equals to p equals to q so since there is a possibility that q should be q being greater than p greater than t it is not always possible but take the second one even though you consider everything as equal now reduce everything here he is asking for q and s s is equals to r so your s comes here s is greater than even if you assume equality q is p q equals to p equals to t s is greater than q so in no case does this condition fail so what is the answer this this is going by the logic way but what did i tell you this is one way of doing it but is there another way i'll tell you we call this laila majnu method see that is such a fun that if you are prepared and 
your presence of mind is great you can easily solve these questions within seconds one there are two conditions if consider the symbol here if the symbol is like this you can go from this side to this side consider it as an open door door closes and opens consider this symbol as open door you open it you can go that way you can go this way but you can't come this way let's uh, do everything like this let's define every symbol symbol this way equals to you can go from this way to this way but you can't come from that way next equals to it is open you can come this way or you can go that way next lesser than you can come from there to here but you can't go from here to there these are the same principles no need to buy heart nothing if you see an open sign think this think of this as doors open go you can't if you see a point end you can't come from that side now apply the same technique here yes should be what are the statements given we need to validate the statements here yes should be easily able to travel to q now apply the same here yes can travel can travel because open end here also open end here also open end so s is equals to q but c q is equals to t q must be able to travel to t this so q in the first instance itself we get a point end so it is done how many no i am explaining it took 2 minutes but if you know these rules it is hardly a 30 second question so now tell me how cs at is cs at is full of questions like that people think uh, normally suppose let us assume that you have not taken all these uh, questions you don't know how to frame this you might think oh there is something big there but just like roger banister's 4 uh, minute mile break it into blocks see what is possible and believe me every csat questions you can solve it through options itself you can pass csat even if you don't know any concept through options itself so this is another way of applying so what does upsc want from you it needs your application ability in csat so what are the conclusions here your gs preparation should be should not be used for csat preparation too there are two different bees each needs their own respect and their own way of solving it next csat is focusing on your application ability and to apply what do you need to know first you need to have a board side view of the whole subject and like gs you do you solve the question you fail it you see the solution you know it that process can't be applied in csat because in csat solution or solving is always less than analysis you need to analyze where you have gone wrong is your problem with knowledge is your problem with applicative ability is your problem with calculation skills see because we have discussed the question here it contains these many steps even if you are wrong in one step no matter uh, your knowledge level no matter your uh, question preparing uh, skills no matter how many mock tests you have done it doesn't matter here your answer will be wrong so to conquer csat you need a board side view of the topic you are preparing and next your analysis is more important than 
you solving the question i hope and we have designed our csat crash course like how roger banister did we do did the same we divided everything the syllabus into all its constituent parts and thought okay where are students failing what needs to be done and our course is designed to give you the whole 360 degree view so that questions without uh, questions unfamiliar to you will not come in the csat and next even if they come you are equipped enough to deal with them thank you